Hello and welcome to this Hawk Hydromit webinar on OTT Acoustic Digital Current Meter, also known as the OTT ADC. I'm Nick Rendell with Hawk Hydromit, and over the next half hour, OTT product manager Christelle Valentine will provide a general overview of the OTT ADC, its measuring principle, and the quality assurance tests and reports. I will now give a brief history on OTT and its work with flow meters. Ott hydrometry was founded in Kenton, Germany in 1873 by Albert Ott as a mathematical mechanical institute. Two years later, Ott produced its first mechanical current meter for measuring in-stream velocities. Soon thereafter, Ott current meters became the industry standard for velocity measurements. By the 1970s, Ott had developed modern mechanical current meters, the C31 and C2. In 1992, Ott developed its first electromagnetic meter, the OTT Nautilus. And in 2007, OTT launched the OTT ADC, its first acoustic meter. We will now look at the advantages of using an acoustic current meter. Acoustic current meters have many advantages over their mechanical and electromagnetic predecessors. Acoustic meters automatically calculate discharge using measured velocities and recorded depth. All values are recorded and saved in the handheld, eliminating the need to carry and transcribe measured values in a field book. Back at the office, measurements can be downloaded from the handheld directly onto your PC. This in turn reduces measurement error and time required to process measurement data. Also, to improve measurement quality, the ADC averages hundreds of velocity measurements within the user-defined measurement interval. Discharge measurements can be easily connected by one person. The OTT ADC stores each and every measured value in its 4 megabyte memory, including measured depth, velocity, position on the tagline, and notes. Unlike mechanical meters, the OTT ADC has a lifetime factory calibration, reducing total cost of ownership and instrument downtime. It's also important to note that there are no initial speed requirements with the OTT ADC. The meter measures velocities ranging from negative 0.65 feet per second to greater than 7 feet per second. Christelle will now provide an overview of the OTT ADC and its features. Thanks, Nick. The OTT ADC is designed specifically for measuring point velocities and water depth in open channels and natural streams. A few examples of ideal uses include single or multi-point velocity and discharge measurement. Velocity and depth information from the sensor is displayed in real time on the handheld unit. Discharge measurements are based on standard, vertical, or subsection measurement techniques and are associated with mid and mean section discharge calculations and based on internationally recognized USGS and ISO 748 standards. Mean velocity and depth measurements, along with the position of the sensor on the tagline, are used to calculate the discharge. All measurements, including quick quality checks, velocity, and discharge, can be downloaded using the QReview application software. Mid or mean section methods are used to calculate total discharge. In this case, we are looking at the equation used in the handheld to compute the discharge associated with vertical number three using the mid section method. In this method, the measurement cross section is divided into individual sections. The individual sections are defined by half the distance to the neighboring vertical. For this reason, the first and last verticals should be as close to the edges as possible. Your position on the cross section is entered into the handheld display or automatically entered if the vertical spacing has not changed. For depth, the ADC references its built-in pressure sensor. It is possible to turn off the depth sensor if you'd like to enter a manual measurement. The total discharge is the sum of all segments. SOT ADC supports one, two, and three point measurements, as well as four, five, and six. The ADC also supports one and two point ice measurements, in which the ADC leverages the built-in pressure sensor to record water depth from surface of the water to the bottom of the ice and to the bottom of the stream bed. Signal to noise and beam correlation factor is used in detecting the presence of slush and identifying the slush boundary. Ice thickness is entered in the handheld and stored with each measurement. 
Dot.ADC Handheld provides real-time information about the measurement, including a measurement progress bar, velocity in large numbers, the position of the sensor on the tagline, data quality represented as signal bars, and target in actual depth. At each vertical, prompts on the screen guide you to move the sensor up and down in the water column to the correct depth for your measurement. The ADC displays the X component of velocity as an average of measurements from both transducers. Measurements on the screen are updated every three seconds. Constructed of stainless steel Delrin, this robust sensor contains two 6 MHz acoustic transducers along with the temperature and depth sensor. Water temperature is an important parameter, both for the calculation of the speed of sound and for the, wa for the temperature compensated depth measurement. Water depth is measured by an absolute pressure cell built into the ADC sensor body. The weighting rod adapter fixes directly on USGS top setting and standard weighting rods. No additional adapters or brackets are required. Depth is measured every second, and an average is recorded and stored along with each velocity measurement. If during the measurement, the actual depth deviates from the target depth by more than 0.03 feet, the actual depth value is illuminated with a solid flashing background. This notifies the user during the measurement and allows time to correct the position of the sensor in the water column while still at the vertical measuring. It has a 0 to 5 meter measuring range and an accuracy of plus or minus 0.01 foot. The pressure cell is calibrated every 30 minutes during a measurement to make sure the sensor measurement values are correct. A depth calibration is quick and easy. Simply place the sensor in air. It is also possible to turn off the depth sensor. Calibrating the depth sensor in air identifies the ambient noise level of the ADC's electronics. The noise level is used as a quality control parameter to ensure instrument performance and to determine the signal-to-noise ratio. The sensor calibration date and time is recorded in the summary discharge file. Now we'll transition from the system components to the measurement process and measuring principle. Measurement quality is dependent on the correct selection of a measurement cross-section, ideally a straight section of water where streamlines are parallel to each other and the stream bed is stable would be selected. Setting up the ADC is as simple as entering a measurement name and station number. Additional information such as a measurement number, estimated or rated discharge, or estimated width may also be entered. However, it is not required. A field quality check can also be conducted before starting your measurement to check if the site is suitable. During a measurement, velocity and depth are displayed in real time. To attain a depth measurement, the sensor is lowered to the stream bed and the user confirms the reading. Then from the main measurement screen, live cues are displayed and they, and they guide you to raise or lower the sensor to achieve the actual correct depth. This depth is in accordance with the selected velocity method. For example, if you select a one-point measurement, the screen will guide you to the six-tenth depth. The average flow velocity at a vertical is calculated from a defined number of individual measurements at different depths. These individual velocities, when applied to the vertical depth, give an image of the, ver of the velocity distribution. On-screen warning messages notify the user when quality assurance criteria is not met. The goal of the measurement is to determine the average flow velocity of specific verticals and at the same time automatically determine discharge of the cross-section using the mid or mean section method. The transducers transmit ultrasonic signals which are reflected back to the sensor by air bubbles, or particles suspended in the water column. These received backscatter echoes are amplified in the sensor head and digitized in the digital signal processor, or the DSP, inside the handheld display. This transmit and receive process is repeated to generate a second echo pattern. The DSP uses a pulse coherent technique 
to calculate the phase of each return pulse echo. Reflection patterns are checked for similarities using the cross-correlation method. Phase differences, or the lag time between the return pulse echoes, is proportional to the flow velocity. Each measurement is validated against quality thresholds for accuracy. Note, hundreds of pulse pairs are used to calculate velocity every second. Each 6 MHz transducer works both as a transmitter and receiver. The ADC measures the velocity of particles in the water. The resulting signal amplitude is affected by particle number, size, and distribution. The sample volume located 4 inches in front of the sensor is controlled by the receiving time window of the time controller. There are more particles in a large sample volume, and therefore more particles reflect an acoustic signal. As a result, the acoustic echo has a stronger signal strength. With a large sample volume, more particles contribute to the velocity estimation, and the end computed velocity is more stable. Signal to noise is a measure of the strength of the reflected acoustic signal relative to the noise in the AUT ADC electronics. The AUT ADC has two sample volumes. Hundreds of pulse pair echoes from both sample areas are used to calculate the average velocity. Longer measuring times have a greater number of velocity estimations used to derive mean velocity, and the closer the calculated results are to the true mean velocity. Using two sample volumes improves precision by averaging measurements collected from each and makes it possible to offset the sample volume from the center line of the probe. In stable flow conditions, the correlation between the average raw measurements is higher than 70% and correspond to small standard deviations. 